Okay, so um, today I'm going to talk about my history and why I became a realtor and why I'm so passionate about it and helping other people. So in 1994, my husband and I were in a, um, were in escrow on a home that we were purchasing here in Saugus. And then the 1994 earthquake hit. And um, so I called my realtor the next day and I said, hey, you know, can you go and check out the home? and see what's happening, you know, see if it's still standing. And he says, yes, I'll get back to you. A Couple days later, he got back to me and he says, you know, I went to see the house, everything's good, you don't have to worry about anything. And then we had, you know, this long conversation about what's gonna happen next, da da da. So, after I got off the phone with him that whole day, I, I couldn't get, um, I didn't get a warm and fuzzy feeling. I, didn't resonate in my spirit what he was telling me. And so I just kept saying, God, something is not right. Something is wrong. I was six months pregnant at the time and my husband was like, oh, you know, you're just, you know, hormonal, right? <laughs> and I'm just like, man. So he did not want to take the day off work to come down here because the 14 freeway had collapsed and it was hours and hours and hours of families trying to get home and go to work and so he didn't want to go through all that traffic. I finally convinced him to take me to Santa Clarita and we did. And as I walked up to the house, the, there was a crack in the driveway that started at the driveway that went all the way to the front door. I don't know if it stopped there or if it went all the way through. So there was two brick pillars that held up the front porch. Those had both moved about six inches. We went around um, outside. The pool plaster was in the pool. There was cracks in the pool. Um, finally, the realtor met us there. He opened the door for us. The water, the water heater had broke and it was all over the floor. And the bricks from the chimney had fallen into the fireplace. That's a huge problem. Usually they fall on the outside. Anyway, so needless to say that we canceled escrow and unfortunately we fired our realtor. So fast forward, we are in escrow on a new home with a new realtor and everything's going well and we close escrow. Two weeks later, uh, there's water, a puddle of water on the dining room floor. And I'm like, oh, okay, so the kids spilled some, I don't know, cleaned it up, was, you know, no big deal, right? And every day, for like three days, this water reappeared again. I'm like, what is that? Well, that back wall of the dining room is adjacent to one of our showers. And every time we took a shower, the water ran down the wall and into the dining room. So when the, when the owners moved out, there was a big, huge china cabinet on that wall. And so when they moved all their stuff out, I saw a little discoloration on the flooring. No big deal. We're getting rid of that anyway because it was laminate. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, so I said, okay, what do I do? Now we know that there, this water is causing, is coming from the shower. What do we do? Call my realtor. Hey, you know, give me a call back. Never heard from her. <laughs> Called her again. Hey, left all these messages, email, couldn't connect with my realtor. She had got that check and was gone. Literally, she moved out of state. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Seriously. Wow. Didn't tell me anything. So from those two experiences, I was like, no one should ever feel the way I feel right now. So five years later, I got my real estate license. And um, I am just really passionate about helping people. I'm always there for them. Um, I have talked myself out of transactions. There ha Who's timing me? There was a, um, a client. They were getting a divorce. The husband was moving to Colorado with his girlfriend and he had two daughters still at home that were going to school, called, uh, going to uh, high school. And so he wanted to sell the home and get out of there. 
but they ha their mortgage payment was $1,600 a month. <laughs> so we're looking at rental properties to put the wife and their kids in, and the only thing they can afford were things that were not in a good area for her two daughters, and she wanted her kids to finish uh, high school at the school that they've always known in elementary school and junior high. They wanted, she wants to stay, she wanted them to stay with those kids, right? They're friends. So her husband had a realtor and she had me. So she called me and said, Anita, are you opposed to sitting down together with the four of us and talking about our options? Not a problem. So we set a date, I showed up, I let his realtor talk first and he talked about selling the home and, and how much money they're gonna get and blah, 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 blah. Well, when I looked, let him finish, I looked at the whole picture and I said, listen, you guys, I understand that you're in the middle of a divorce and you two don't probably like each other right now. I said, but for the sake of your children, there are no homes in this valley that's gonna keep your kids at the schools that they're at and pay less money than what you're paying now. Your daughter has two more years. Why don't you let them stay here because she can afford this house. You go on your merry way. In two years, I will come back and sell it. Yes, I said that in front of him. I will come back and sell it. And then you guys could, you know, then, you know, the girls are happy because it was about the kids for me, you know. So, she walked me outside and she just broke down and cried. And she says, oh my God, I have never met anyone like you. Because it wasn't about money. It wasn't about um, trying to get a dollar to sell their home. It was about what was the best option for them. So needless to say, three years later, I sold their home. <laughs> so, um, Today, I am very passionate about what I do. I really want to help people. I want to, I like to give them options so that they can realize their dream. I have clients that I have held their hands for three years, five years, and they've come back to me because now they're ready. And we jump on the bandwagon and I get them, you know, I help them with a home. So. That's Anita Smith, that's my history, that's how I became a realtor, and I absolutely love it. And I'm gonna be doing this for the rest of my life. I told my husband, I am not gonna retire. I could do this wherever I go. Speaking of that, I um, was also the president of the Women's Council of Realtors here in Santa Clarita, and also on a different, uh, different other boards, like the Government Affairs Board for the City of Santa Clarita, and um, I know a lot of people. I sell homes in Texas, in Virginia, in Oregon. I can help, because of my connection with all these women, and all these other, you know, realtors, I know them because we meet at least four or five times a year. One more other thing, he said I had two more, minute, uh, two more minutes. The other thing, every year I go to the Sacramento um, Capitol, to the Capitol, and I fight for home owners, home ownership. Today, there is a measure double E on the um, ballot, and that basically is saying that you are going to pay another 90 cents per square feet of, of um, depend, you know, the size of your home for um, another 90 cents in taxes. So I went to the, um, I went to fight in Sacramento and I said, you know, we, there was a bunch of realtors and we talked, we get to talk to the senators, we get to talk to the assemblymen, you know, we sit in their office and we tell them why we want them to vote the way we do. I feel very good about that because I know what's happening in the community and I know what's happening in real estate. So that's my, um, that's my spiel for today. <laughs> yes. So, what do you feel like the real estate right now market that's increased since it's you know lows in 08, 09? So, what do you see right now in the next 
foreseeable future about real estate market prices on residential? Well, listen. Real estate is one of the best investments you're ever going to make. You know, you have to learn when to purchase uh, and when to sell. So I believe my crystal ball tells me <laughs> that um, today the market has, I don't know if you guys know, but the market has went down a little bit, but it's normal. There were so many people that were just buying homes, your neighbor, you, you, your, you sold your home. You were like, oh, whoa, she got $6.85? I'm going to put mine on the market for $7.15. And you got it. Because we don't have enough homes on the market. We don't have enough inventory. So where I see the market going is we have slowed down a little bit. It's just a soft correction. We have corrected. The, the market corrects itself all the time. In the past 20 years, we have earned over 12% um, from, from owning a home. You're not going to get that anywhere else. I don't care what you do. The mar uh, money market, you you're not going to see that kind of um, equity. So I believe that the market is going to continue to go up, you know? And people want to wait to buy or whatever. It's, you're going to be paying more then, then, than you are now. All right, one more question. What can we do? Um, to oppose this measure E? Um, this measure E, vote no. <laughs> um, it will be on the, huh? Sort of on the ballot, right? Yeah, it's going to be on the ballot, measure E. Um, th this, this will help the, the small people like you and I, it's going to hurt us. Because who wants to pay more taxes on their home? We always, we already pay a ton of taxes. The people, the corporations who own units and big buildings, you know, it's going to hurt them too, but it's not going to hit their pocket as hard as it's going to hit ours. So. All right. Watch that. Thank you, Anita. You're welcome.